Hello and welcome back. We are still in day nine of this mule advanced training. In earlier lecture of day nine, we understood about how to achieve reliability goals, how to design your application to achieve reliability goals. We understood clearly about until successful, how to use it, redelivery policy and reconnection strategies, and also how to use retry exhausted uh, error type to handle exceptions or errors when redeliveries are exhausted. And also we saw how to um, how transactions work, how we can use transactions for achieving reliability. Now today we are going to see a very important design pattern called as reliability pattern. So what is this reliability pattern? So in what scenarios first of all to use reliability pattern? Zero message or data loss for non transactional systems is achieved using reliability pattern. So, if you are having a non transactional system, but still you don't want to lose your messages, in such cases, you can implement this reliability pattern. So, let me tell you a scenario first. I will tell you two scenarios. You'll clearly understand. <coughs> okay, first scenario assume that I am using a message broker uh, let us say i'm using active mq and i'm having a queue um, and this active mq supports transactions this is a system which supports transactions we know that now assume that i have a mule application i have a flow where i am having on new message i can configure this to start a transaction and also i could have configured it uh, re deliveries. Okay. Now, assume that in this flow, I'm having some logic where one of the component is sending a message, uh, maybe is sending a message to another queue in the same broker. After doing some processing, this is sending a message to another queue in the broker, and maybe the next component is writing to database. So then this component assume that it is throwing some exception. After sending the message to this queue and writing to database, if exception occurs here, is it possible to roll back all the transactions related to database and JMS broker? Yes, in such cases, we will use XA transactions, right? If you don't remember about XA transactions, see my previous video on transaction management, you will get a clear understanding. OK, yes, it is possible to use XA transactions here and it entire thing can be rolled back, right? So assume that this flow is configured with transactions and redeliveries as three. What will happen when the message is received by this <coughs> on new message listener? A transaction started in that transaction. The message is sent and written to database. Transaction is rolled back. Here I configured redelivery is three, right? Then what again the message will be pre-delivered in a new transaction. Again, that is rolled back. Again, redelivered, again rolled back. After three redeliveries, what will happen? This listener will send a message to the broker that even after three redeliveries, also the message processing was not successful then this active mq as we know it can push that message to a dead letter queue so our message is not lost the message is in dead letter queue and we can uh, reprocess it as we want so the, the messages are never lost in this case because our flow is talking to a source our flow is using a source which supports transactions OK, but what if the message source does not support a transaction? For example, assume that I have a flow with a HTTP endpoint. So any HTTP client application will make a HTTP call. And this receiving of this HTTP request cannot be in a transaction. HTTP does not support transactions, right? Assume a same scenario where 
uh, we were we are sending a message to a broker queue and also we are writing to a database now i want the transaction to be rolled back if an exception occurs here does this receiving happen in happen in a transaction no right if the the client sends a message in a transaction if this http request can also be done in a transaction if exception is thrown even after redelivery uh, if it is possible that this http listener can tell to the client somehow that the message is not processed and if the client application is capable of uh, storing that message for further processing then my message is not lost but how can we tell to the client application to persist the messages in case if it gets a response saying that the message is not processed it is not practically possible to tell to the http client that the error is not the message is not processed and save the state we cannot enforce that rules on the client but whereas in case of jms that is by default the behavior so in this case if i am having a message source which does not support transactions how do i achieve reliability i don't want to lose the messages once my flow gets a message i want to make sure that the messages is either processed or in case of multiple failures even after redeliveries i want the message to be persisted somewhere i don't want to lose the messages so maybe i want to reprocess them again so how to achieve it so that is where we can use a reliability pattern so let me explain you reliability pattern using this diagram so what reliability pattern says it's actually a design pattern right what reliability pattern says is whenever you are receiving a request from a non transactional source like http assume don't process that message in this flow itself you divide your processing into multiple flows first flow we call it as acquisition flow where the message is acquired by this message source so only receiving the message should be there here once the message source receives a message then push that message to a queue either it either it can be a jms queue or a vm queue but we prefer jms queues for reliability now let us talk about jms queues first so here in this flow i'll push the message to a jms queue okay now the actual processing logic i will write inside a processing flow now this flow will consume from this queue and now here it can start a transacted session and here of course we can do redeliveries whatever we want this is start a transacted session and receive the message from the queue and then it will try to process it if while processing exception is there then what happens of course redeliveries are possible within this and if after redeliveries also if the message is not processed that transactions are rolled back right so the message will still be there in the queue and if the number of redeliveries are crossing the maximum maybe the broker will put that message in the dead letter queue so we are not losing our messages so what we are doing we are splitting our process into two flows acquisition flow processing flow acquisition flow will just acquire the message and push it to a queue that's all the actual logic is executed in the processing flow and of course this processing flow can be configured with a transaction so you are not losing our messages okay optionally suppose after processing you want to send a message to another destination maybe suppose after processing you want to send this to maybe a database or a soap web service so if in your logic if you are trying to call a soap web service and database what if there is a problem with a database or soap web service again this may throw an exception and again the message processing might fail right so after processing if you want um, to deliver the message to some third parties again 
don't write that logic again in the processing flow because this soap might not be supporting transaction database is fine let us start with soap or rest you are trying to send that message to a soap or rest these systems again do not support transactions right so how to handle that yeah. now what whatever messages you want to send to other third parties outbound messages don't send that directly in the processing flow. again push the message to another queue and you will have one more optional flow in this case dispatcher flow is optional according to reliability pattern so this dispatcher flow what it will do it will consume from this message and maybe here you can write the logic to send this message outside that means to a rest or so this is an outbound endpoint so in case if this outbound endpoint throws an exception the transaction will be rolled back again the message is still there in the queue we are not losing the message we can do retries and the message might be there in the dead letter queue if it is not processed so this is reliability pattern it suggests us to break down our actual flow into acquisition flow processing flow and dispatcher flow is optional if you don't have to send that message to other systems dispatcher flow is optional so you have to implement your logic like this according to reliability pattern and um, <clears throat> as you know um, you whenever you're configuring redelivery policies you can configure redelivery after five minutes not immediately right whenever you are configuring redeliveries you can configure that the redelivery can be done in five minutes suppose while message is getting processed if the other system is down we don't want to redeliver immediately right we have an option to specify what is the redelivery uh, what is the redelivery delay delay between retries redeliveries right five minutes after five minutes we'll try to attempt again attempt pricing again so like that we handle um, systems we delivery process we process the delivery reliably reliably process the messages right this is reliability pattern okay now again uh, you can combine reliability pattern with message sorry quick acknowledgement pattern i'll tell you one scenario let's assume that you have a flow which is taking http message it's having http listener after you receive the message assume that you want to execute task one Assume that the logic for task one is there in a separate flow. A task two, this is separate flow. Task three, this is separate flow. Assume that uh, whenever you receive a request, you want to first invoke task one, then task two, then task three. Right? Maybe these tasks are talking to databases or SOAP web services or whatever. So for every message, you want to execute three tasks. It is possible that any task may fail. So what you can do to handle failures, as we know, we can wrap this logic for task one in until successful. So it will do the redeliverance, retry, sorry. Here, this also I can wrap it inside until successful. This also I can wrap it inside until successful. But if you are configuring until successful with retries and uh, retry intervals, the response may take a lot of time. It is possible that uh, response time might be more. So uh, the client, we cannot keep the client waiting for response. So as we know, what is what can be done here? The thing is, um, I will split this logic into two flows acquisition flow again and processing flow in acquisition flow what i will do is i just have http listener once i receive a message i'll push it push the message to a queue that's all then in another flow i will receive the message and here i'll call task one task two task three that means i'll process a message asynchronously so in this acquisition flow, what I can do after pushing the message 
to this queue. I can send a quick acknowledgement response to the client. I hope you remember the quick acknowledgement pattern. If you don't remember, please go to the previous videos where I have discussed about quick acknowledgement pattern. So here what we are acquiring the message, sending a quick acknowledgement to the client. Right and we are sending the message to the queue. Then the actual logic which will where we are configuring until successful. All this can be done in a uh, separate flow. And of course, as this flow is receiving a message from broker queue, I can configure transactions, right? And uh, redeliveries, everything. So in case if any of the task fails, we'll be doing redeliveries. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, the transaction started. So in case of failures, rollback might be done. After all, redeliveries also within the flow. If still it is failing, the message will be sent to a dead letter queue. We are not losing our messages. So actually, you can use reliability pattern in combination with quick acknowledgement pattern for these kind of scenarios. So as an architect, whenever you are designing your solutions, you have to think about various things. What is your SLA? According to your SLA, you should give response in how many seconds? Can the message be processed asynchronously? Right? If you get answers for all this, based on whatever inputs you have, you have to take a decision. See, here these all are patterns. Based on your scenario, you have to decide which pattern is applicable for your scenario. So that's about um, reliability pattern. Now, other things to achieve reliability is persistent VM queues. Suppose if you are not using JMS queues, if you are using VM queues, I hope you remember in VM queues, there are two types of VM queues, transient and persistent. Suppose in your application, if you are using a VM queue and if it is transient, what will happen if your application crashes? You will, you will lose your messages in this VMQ. So to process reliably, make sure that you make uh, the VMQs as persistent. OK. So if it is persistent, again, based on the scenario, suppose if you are deploying to a standalone runtime, whatever you are persisting, whatever you are writing to this persistent VMQ, they will be returned to your file system right we understood if you don't remember go and see back that a video related to vmqs so if you are running your application in a standalone runtime and if you are writing messages to persistent queue the messages are persisted to file system okay but what if you have a cluster of mule runtimes and if you are using vmqs i hope you remember mm. If you are using a cluster, uh, Hazelcast, by using Hazelcast internally, Mule will create a distributed virtual queue. So the messages will be sent into this distributed queue. Even if one of the node in the cluster crashes, no problem. The messages are still processed by the other nodes in the cluster. So in this case, we will not lose messages. But in this case of cluster, if you make it persistent queue, then only you will not lose it. OK, fine. Now what about Cloud Hub? You are deploying your applications to Cloud Hub. And this is a VM in Cloud Hub. And if you are using persistent queues, where will the data be written? Where will the data be written? If the data is written to the file system of this VM, if the VM crashes, the data is lost, right? So in case of Cloud Hub. Actually, what happens? Um, Cloud Hub offers a um, uh, service. So what it will do is whenever there is a persistent VMQ and if you have enabled persistent VMQs in your Cloud Hub deployment, uh, actually a persistent storage is attached to this VM and the data will be written to this persistent storage. OK, so if the VM crashes, no problem. The data is safe. Uh, whenever a new VM is created, same persistent storage is attached to this new VM. The data is not lost. 
so we understood it right and in case um, yeah we understood about all these cases um, then let me talk about other things if you don't want to use uh, persistent vmqs in mule there is an option any point mq basically this is a message broker of any point platform itself it is a cloud based message queuing service you can of course use this instead of persistent vmqs okay so message brokers as i said and if you are having object stores within your application suppose if you are using object stores again there are two different types of object stores again in memory object store and persistent object store so in case of persistent object store on premise if you are having a single on premise server whatever you are writing to persistent object store will be written to file system that's okay if you are having a cluster of mule runtimes whatever you are writing to object store will be stored in hazel cast shared memory i hope you remember if you don't remember please go back to the corresponding video and revise it. So in case of a cluster, if you are using a persistent object store, the data will be written to the uh, Hazel cast shared memory. So even if one of the node crashes in a cluster, all the nodes will be sharing the same uh, Hazel cast shared memory, right? Even if one of the node crashes, no problem. The data in your object store is still there, right? OK. Fine, if you are deploying to Cloud Hub, what happens? Whatever data you are writing to persistent object store, I hope you remember in Cloud Hub, there is object store, object store service V2. So um, <clears throat> whenever you are writing some data to a persistent object store, the data is sent to this object store service V2. It is a service on Cloud Hub it will persist the data. So this we know already. But in case of uh, RTF, runtime fabric, runtime fabric is on your premise, right? Uh, so in this case, again, as you know, in runtime fabric, the applications will be deployed inside individual containers, right? So again, where will the persistent object store data be stored. It cannot be stored inside containers file system because if container crashes, the data will be lost. So where? Mm, so in RTF, there is something called as some service called as persistent gateway. So on your runtime fabric, you need to install this service called as persistent gateway. So in your application, if you are using object stores. OK, so your object store connector, you will be using object store connector, right? The object store connector will make REST API calls. To the gateway service, persistent gateway service. Which is installed within your RTF. So the object store connector or whatever components, they'll make REST API calls to persistent gateway and send the data. The persistent gateway will actually persist the object store data. So corresponding to object store service V2 REST API, which is there in Cloud Hub, which is there in Cloud Hub as a service, the corresponding service in runtime fabric is persistent gateway. It will be used to persist your object store data. Fine. Now we already understood about reconnection strategies, redelivery policies. And one more thing to uh, design reliable applications is if you are using streaming options, if you're uh, reading a huge stream, I hope you remember, have a separate section on streaming. We discussed about uh, repeatable streams. If you don't want to lose your data in a stream, right? You remember, you have to use file store repeatable stream. So even if your application crashes, you're not going to lose your data. So if you want to process the data reliably, go for file store 
repeatable stream. And again, we understood about transaction management until successful. First successful also I have explained. So by using all these combinations as an architect, you should be able to design reliable solutions, right? Hope you got uh, the options of, on how to design your application for reliability. If you have any questions, please post a question on as a comment. Maybe I'll try to answer your scenario or maybe I will try to create a new video if you come up with a new scenario. I've covered all the scenarios which MuleSoft actually discusses in its actual training. And these scenarios will be sufficient for you to clear the MCIA exam as well as you will be able to answer now the questions related to questions, interview questions related to this reliability, right? That's all. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow with a new topic.